newspaper stories all across our county. But for one week, we'll focus on El Cajon, how people are making it. We'll celebrate community and the unique challenges there for the future. Starting tomorrow, we will experience life in El Cajon. A teen rushed to the hospital after being shot in the chest at a high school basketball game. The males caught on camera details on the officer also hurt during that shooting. The royal family holding emergency meetings with Meghan and Harry about their plan to step back as senior members of the royal family. San Diego police have an innovative solution to helping the homeless and connect them with resources. And remember, you can get breaking news as it happens anytime. Follow us on Twitter at 10 News. 10 News Mornings, connecting you to San Diego. The bluff in Del Mar you can see is crumbling right by the railroad tracks. Look at the possibility of moving the track. California could become the first state to offer its own generic prescription drugs. This is a move that will make prescription drugs available at an affordable price. Car flipped over on the 78, turned back onto its wheels. Temperatures will top off about 63 degrees. The minute you wake up, get caught up with 10 News. Weekdays at 4.30 a.m. A teenager shot in the chest at a high school basketball game in Dallas. That victim now fighting for their life in critical condition. <laughs> Chilling video there. You can hear that gunfire erupting right in the middle of the game. The victim was a former student who underwent emergency surgery. A police officer was also hospitalized after being hit by shrapnel. Investigators say it all started from a fight that broke out in the stands. That suspect is in custody. The British royal family is meeting tomorrow to discuss the future of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex within the House of Windsor. Buckingham Palace has been in crisis mode since the couple's decision to step back from royal duties. The meeting will be attended by Her Majesty the Queen, as well as Prince Charles and, of course, Prince William, Prince Harry as well. Meghan won't be there. She returned to Canada shortly after the announcement last week. However, she is expected to dial into this meeting from Canada. Then there's a range of possibilities that may be discussed at the meeting. Many critics of the Duke and Duchess say they shouldn't be able to earn money independently and retain royal titles. Meanwhile, the London-based Times has reported Meghan Markle has agreed to record a voiceover for Disney in exchange for the company making a donation to a charity that works to protect elephants. The Times gave no details about what Meghan's voiceover would involve, but says Disney would make a donation to the charity Elephants Without Borders in return. Homeless San Diegans facing jail or a citation now have another option. Stay in a shelter for 30 days. As 10 News reporter Amanda Brandeis explains, San Diego police think it's an innovative solution to helping the homeless and connect them with the resources that they really need. Huh. Huh, sweetie, huh? Hope Bermudez is making her rounds at the Alpha Project's Bridge Shelter downtown. Hey, Bob! <laughs> she was on the streets for 20 years until she accepted help here. I got tired of being out in the streets. She got drug addiction treatment and access to mental health care. Now, she has her own apartment. Words can't describe it. <laughs> it's something that's mine. San Diego police and the Alpha Project want to see more success stories like this. Over the years, Bermuda spent a lot of time in jail. Down here, you know, it's more encroachment. The department's neighborhood policing division enforces quality of life laws like encroachment and illegal lodging. Now homeless people facing jail or citation have another option, going to the Alpha Project shelter. If they stay for 30 days, the ticket goes away. We want people to be unsheltered. We want to bring them to a place where the specialists are. The Lieutenant Carmelin Rivera says they started the incentive program last summer, but people weren't required to stay for 30 days. 67% left the shelter right away. Now that number has dropped to 46%. People seem to be more accepting now of those kind of services, in particular shelter. Instead of taking you to jail, we take you over and give you a shot at redemption, you know, a shot at success. Alpha Project's Bob McElroy says at first he was skeptical, but says the 50 beds are staying filled and many participants are accepting help after the 30 days. Very encouraging experience for me after 35 years of doing this to see some of these folks that have been out there, we've been trying to help for decades, actually coming in now and say, Bob, 
I want some help, man. And they're ready to provide it. Amanda Brandeis, 10 News. San Diego police say while they're seeing positive results, it is still too early to know how effective the program actually is so far. Bad weather could be a factor in some people having to stay a little bit longer. Officers say whether a homeless person is facing a citation or not, they are offered space at that shelter. 10 News is looking ahead now to some of the big events happening this week in San Diego. On Monday, a former La Jolla Country Day School teacher was accused of having a sexual relationship with a student. He'll be back in court. Jonathan San Martino has a preliminary hearing scheduled. He's accused of having a sexual relationship with a 17 year old student back in 2016. Happening Tuesday, the San Diego City Council is going to look over a proposed $900 million bond for affordable homes. The San Diego Housing Federation pushing to get homes for San Diegans on the November 2020 ballot. The bond would create 7,500 affordable homes as part of the city's action plan on homelessness. That city council's meeting, the Housing Federation is expected to be at the meeting. It's at 2 o'clock on Tuesday. Also happening Tuesday, they'll hold a public meeting on the environmental impact of a new oceanfront luxury resort in Del Mar. A company called Zephyr wants to build this hotel on 16 and a half acres on a bluff overlooking the ocean just north of Dog Beach. Opponents say many homes that will lose their ocean views. Another complaint is that Solana Beach will get more traffic while seeing none of the tax income. A draft of the environmental impact report was released. It'll be reviewed over a 45 day period. Tuesday's meeting will reveal all of that information for the public. And so far we're off to a good start this morning. Yeah. Yesterday was really nice. Starting to see some sunrise. Starting to see a little Beauty bit of shots. sunrise. We knew that was going to happen. Finally <laughs> coming up. Really pretty shot there looking east. Mm. Time right now is 619. Current temperature in downtown San Diego is 50 degrees. We're looking at night and morning clouds, but clearing through the afternoon. So mostly sunny skies below average temperatures, though a couple storms passing to our north pushing in some of that cooler air, but we will be dry for the weekend and into the start of the week. Our first chance for showers is going to start creeping into the forecast on Thursday, lingering into Friday, which may cause some problems for the morning commute. We're still working on that timing for you. Chilly start for the morning. We're looking at 52 degrees for the nine o'clock hour, mostly cloudy skies for some portions of the coastal areas, but that's all going to clear through the afternoon very nicely. 62 degrees by noon with a mix of sun and clouds, increasing clouds though by 4 p.m. 60 degrees will be your temperature there. Looking pretty good. Inland valleys will see a lot of sunshine for today. So once again, dry for the weekend and into the start of the week. Chance for rain creeping in the forecast at 50% as of right now on Thursday. So uh, as of right now, it doesn't look like we're going to see any heavy rain, but of course that could change. So you're saying there's a chance. There's a chance. 50%, 50-50. Sounds good. Thank you, Jen. 620 now and uh, something we won't see here this week, but a rare sight captured on camera in Egypt. Look at this. Video shows snow on the mountains of Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. A remarkable rescue by the man who pulled three people from a car in a pond says he was just in the right place at the right time. Beautiful shot here, as you said, looking east. Oh, love that. Uh, traffic moving pretty well on the 94 too, as long as we're taking a look. Things are pretty smooth this morning. It's going to be really sunny. There. Yeah. We talked about a great forecast. It's 623 on this Sunday morning. We're so glad you're here with us. And we do have new video this morning of a rare snowfall in Egypt. Snow is blanketing the mountainous area in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. Just beautiful conditions out there. A local resident captured this video. This was early on Friday morning. The ground completely covered in white. The icy conditions continued yesterday as a cold front front moved through snowfall in the area usually only sticks around for a day or two, though, until those temperatures get back to normal. A man in Nebraska says he was just in the right place at the right time. When a car lost control, it ended up in an icy pond with three men trapped inside. Terry Ingram was out taking some photos at the pond and he saw the car crash and rushed to help. Look at that. He ran into the ice cold water, hearing a man screaming for help. Once I pulled the other the, the door open, the water started going in and he was coming out and just seeing those bodies there, I thought they were gone. Fortunately, they weren't Ingram alone, rescued all three men. The, the men's family members reached out to him online to thank Ingram. He says he's just grateful that the timing was just right. If you need something to do this weekend, you got a lot of options. So many things happening around town this weekend. 10 News anchor Virginia Chaw has the events you will not want to miss in exploring San Diego. Hey, happy Sunday. If you love dinosaurs and you might want to sink your teeth into Jurassic Quest, 
interact with baby dinosaurs and walking dinosaurs, not to mention the all-new ancient oceans featuring the largest apex predator, a moving 50-foot megalodon, as well as other ocean dwellers, plus dinosaur-themed rides, science stations, and more. At the Del Mar Fairgrounds from 9 to 7, tickets must be purchased online. They run from $22 to $36. Discounts for first responders and military families. From prehistoric sea turtles to a current one, today is the turtle -versary at Birch Aquarium. It's the Loggerhead Sea Turtle's fifth anniversary and you can celebrate her by learning some sea turtle science and enjoying crafts and other family-friendly activities. It's included with admission. At Birch Aquarium from 11 to 3, general admission is $15 to $19.50, two and under free and discounts for military. And for some music to soothe the soul, you might want to head to La Jolla for the Sound On Festival of Modern Music. Today is the last day to enjoy international composers and artists performing contemporary chamber music, some unconventional, plus a chance to engage in an interactive workshop. At the Athenaeum Music and Arts Library on Wall Street starting at 2, tickets are $5 to $25. There is more going on today that we don't have time to get to, but if you go to 10news.com and click on Exploring San Diego right there, it'll take you to a page where you can get more information on everything going on. I'm Virginia Cha, 10 News. Deadly storms are slamming the south and the midwest. High winds peeling back the roof of a school. We have a look at that damage. A colorful celebration in Hillcrest. A look at San Diego's first ever rainbow crosswalk installed. 626 right now. You are watching 10 News this morning. Right now on 10 News this morning, firefighters battle a fire to Talmadge business overnight. We are live at the scene where there's some major damage left behind. Protesters taking over the streets of Iran, shifting their anger after the killing of their general. Why many are now angry at their own government. Severe storms are sweeping parts of the country right now and turning deadly. The damage left behind and the problems it's creating at airports across the country. 10 News this morning starts right now. Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. It is Sunday, January 12th. It is just about 6.30 on the dot, so we're starting to see some really pretty sunrise shots. I'm Mary McKenzie. And I'm Jennifer Dela Cruz. Beautiful sunrise to start the day. Very similar to what we saw yesterday. Just really nice conditions into the afternoon as well. And that's what we have on tap for you. Current condition in downtown San Diego. You're looking at 50 degrees, 40s for the rest of the coastline. Still very chilly in Poway at 38 degrees right now. 41 in Escondido, 31 in Ramona, 20s for Warner Springs. Keep that jacket handy through the morning hours into the afternoon. We're not going to be warming up a ton into the 50s by the 10 o'clock hour. 60s return right around noon, but we're not going to get much warmer than that. No 70s anytime soon in your seven day forecast hour by hour for the inland valleys. 44 degrees at 8 o'clock this morning, 61 by noon, keeping it in the low 60s through the afternoon hours. 40s yet again for tonight, so it will be chilly through the evening. But no matter where you are throughout the county, from the coast to the mountains to the deserts, looking really great. Perfect to wrap up the weekend. Excellent. Okay, Jen, thank you. 630 now a fire breaks out inside a Talmadge shopping center overnight. Crews now are there working to figure out what happened. 10 News reporter Nate Holmes joins us live. She's been there all morning on El Cajon Boulevard. Nate, firefighters have made a lot of good progress there so far. Oh yeah, firefighters made a lot of progress. They attacked this fire aggressively as soon as they arrived on scene and they were able to contain the flames to that one unit. Firefighters wrapped up just after, just before six o'clock this morning, but actually right now, the board up company is here. They're working to get this gate off of the front door and then board up this, uh, business here. This is actually an alterations business, but you can see just how much damage was made to the building. You can see a lot of smoke damage. Everything inside looks to be completely charred. Now the fire broke out just after one o'clock this morning. The shopping center is located at the corner of El Cajon Boulevard and Menlo Avenue. Now crews say no one was inside at the time luckily, but they did have to force entry. Firefighters fought the flames from the roof of the business as well as on the ground. Luckily, they were able to again contain the, those flames to the alteration business and minimal smoke damage was made to the neighboring units. Now, electricity has been turned off. There are other businesses in the shopping center, including a market and insurance company and a restaurant as well. We're told a dentist uh, business is here as well. Uh, so the electricity has been turned off. It will be off of again for a little bit of time until they can get that back on back on. But you can see back out here live just how much damp damage has been made to this alteration business. Again, they have company right now looking to board up the place 
until the owners can figure out exactly what they want to do. Live in Talmadge, Nate Holmes, 10 News. Nate, thank you. Right now, there are protests on the streets of Iran. Many people there outraged at their own government for mistakenly shooting down that Ukrainian airliner. ABC Stephanie Ramos has details. Overnight, thousands of Iranians protesting in the streets, not against America, but now against their own government. Outraged over Iran's stunning reversal and admission that its military unintentionally shot down the passenger jet in Tehran Wednesday. President Trump tweeting directly to the Iranian people in both Farsi and English, writing to the brave, long suffering people of Iran. I've stood with you since the beginning of my presidency and my administration will continue to stand with you. We are following your protests closely and are inspired by your courage. After three days of denial, Iran's military now says the Boeing 737 operated by a Ukrainian airline was misidentified as a cruise missile flying over Tehran the same night Iran blasted missiles toward U.S. bases in Iraq, all to avenge the death of Iran's top military commander, Qasem Soleimani. All 176 people on that plane, including Ukrainians and Canadians, were killed. One of them, 23-year-old Sarah Sadat, a college student who attended Alient International University in San Diego. On the night of the attack, U.S. intelligence captured radar signals from the Iranians, which targeted the jetliner. A satellite saw two missiles fire. At least one exploded into pieces near the jet. Ukraine's president posting these photos of what he said is shrapnel damage on the plane. But questions still remain. Why was Ukraine's airline not warned of the dangers and why was the airspace left open? This is uh, one of the issues that we certainly uh, need better answers to. That was ABC Stephanie Ramos reporting more than a dozen Saudi servicemen are being kicked out of the U.S. This following the investigation into the deadly Pensacola Naval Air Base shooting. Back in December, a Saudi Air Force officer shot and killed three American sailors on the base. CNN reporting that the servicemen are not accused of helping the gunmen, but some are believed to have ties to extremist groups. A few others have been accused of possessing child pornography. The Justice Department declined to comment. Federal and park officials at Yosemite National Park looking into what caused at least a dozen people to get sick with a stomach bug. They're now inspecting the park's food service areas. The National Park Service and health officials first launched an investigation earlier this month after visitors and employees reported getting sick. The outbreaks also prompted a major cleanup at the park's restaurants, snack shops and hotels. Park officials say those who were sick are getting better or they've already recovered. Happening now, deadly storms are sweeping through the Midwest and the South. This is out of Louisiana, where high winds peeled back the roof of this middle school. More than 20 million people in that region were also under a flood watch. The storms bringing damaging tornadoes to Alabama, Kentucky, and Mississippi. The storms have been responsible for 11 deaths so far, including two first responders. Three people were killed in Alabama after a tornado hit two homes. I heard Whistle blowing, I looked at the door. When I looked at the door, the top was coming off the roof. It, it has been a very devastating storm in that area. People have suffered a lot of loss, including life. Hundreds of thousands were left without power from Texas to Ohio. Sections of flooded highways were closed in Oklahoma and Arkansas. Hundreds of flights have also been canceled at Chicago's airports. Happening today here at home, five Democratic candidates for the 50, uh, 53rd Congressional District will be debating. Those candidates are looking to replace Representative Susan Davis, who's retiring at the end of her term. The candidates debating today, Sarah Jacobs, Georgette Gomez, Jose Caballero, Janessa Goldbeck, and Joaquin Vasquez. The debate will be moderated. It's open to the public as well. It starts at 5 tonight at the La Mesa Community Center. More than 8,000 people came out to celebrate the region's first new hospital in 40 years. Quite a turnout there. This was from the open house, a first look at Sharp Chula Vista's Ocean View Tower. The 106 bed hospital features a cafeteria on its top deck, expansive family waiting rooms and technology in every bedroom. There's about 4,000 new homes in this area that is being built, so more and more we are going to have to provide health care for that population. So helpful to this community. The hospital is scheduled to open on Tuesday. Price tag there is $244 million. 
It was a landmark day in Hillcrest. San Diego's first rainbow crosswalk now sits at the corner of Normal Street and University Avenue, and it's the first rainbow crosswalk in the state of California that also includes a transgender flag. It's meant to be a proud representation of the community's role in LGBTQ history. Councilmember Chris Ward and other local leaders were there for the unveiling. He released a statement saying in part, quote, I'm proud that my office has made this symbol of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer pride a reality. This 10 News Pinpoint Weather Report is sponsored by Anderson Plumbing, Heating, and Air. Nobody wows clients like we do. And good day to go out for a walk on a crosswalk. Yeah, or I can't wait to see it. I wish I could have been there yesterday. <laughs> I for know, the it looks unveiling. so beautiful. The artist did such a good job it there. It definitely sticks out and catches your eye, uh, bringing a lot of color to the community. So great place to go walk in. You can really go walk in anywhere. We're going to have really great conditions for today. Mostly sunny skies through the afternoon. Current temperature in downtown San Diego is 50 degrees. This is our live camera from the Coronado Ferry Landing looking across the bay into downtown San Diego. Sunrise already coming up and we're going to see more of that sunshine into the afternoon as well. Upper 30s right now for the inland valleys. Northwest winds that are calm at the moment. Couple clouds moving into the inland valleys, but those will be breaking up very nicely into the afternoon hours. 33 right now for the mountain areas. 39 in our deserts. Daytime high temperatures today are going to be pretty cool on the coastline and for the inland valleys as well. Topping out at 59 degrees though for La Jolla in the afternoon. So temperatures are running well below where they should be for this time in January. We're looking at 48 degrees for Palomar Mountain, 51 in Julian and 60s today for our desert communities for tonight into the 40s yet again for the coastal areas. So keep that jacket handy. It's going to be chilly after the sun sets later this evening. 43 degrees tonight in Escondido, 44 for Poway, upper 30s in Ramona. Temperatures still running once again below average for this time of year. We're not going to see a huge change in our temperatures over the next couple of days. Averaging near 66 degrees for the inland valleys Monday, Tuesday, and pretty much into Wednesday before then we cool down yet again with the chance for showers in the forecast. Starting on Thursday, lingering into Friday, we may see some wet roads for the morning commute on Friday. As of right now, it doesn't look like this is going to be a huge storm, but of course, I will keep an eye on that for you. 63 degrees for your inland valleys today under mostly sunny skies this afternoon. Mountains and deserts looking pretty good. So lots of sunshine, really beautiful conditions for this time in January. Yeah, I love it. No complaints here. No kind complaints of my perfect at all. Forecast. <laughs> okay, thank you, John. Many people are looking to fix their finances this year. We're going to take a look at how you can change some old money habits. And a big basketball game for the SDSU Aztecs who Ooh. were hoping to keep their impressive winning streak going. We will have all the highlights from the big game. You are watching 10 News this morning. Time right now is 640. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this morning. Mary McKenzie and Jennifer Dela Cruz here. Time right now is 642 as we take a live shot outside into downtown with the Coronado Bridge. Sun's coming up already off to a good start here, Mary. And our ominous music for you here this morning. <laughs> Get you out of bed here on this Sunday morning. I want to show you some big plumes of smoke coming from a construction site in Boston after combustible materials underground somehow caught fire. That sent flames shooting out of the pipes at the construction site. Look at that. High winds in the area then carried that thick black smoke throughout the streets of Boston, making it tough for people to see and breathe. Very dark gray and black, so it was it was very hard to even see like the water over there. There was so much smoke that at one point it was even coming out of the vents of an apartment complex next door. Firefighters managed to put the fire out quickly, though, thanks to a sprinkler system that was installed at the construction site. And fortunately, no one was hurt. The Texas parishioner who bravely jumped into action to stop an active shooter will receive the state's highest civilian honor. Last month, Jack Wilson gunned down a shooter who opened fire inside a church killing two people. The 71 year old is a former reserve deputy. Tomorrow he will receive the Medal of Courage for his heroic act. A popular New Year's resolution is to get in shape financially, whether it's <laughs> saving, budgeting or investing. There are all kinds of ways to do it better. As part of our Making It in San Diego series, 10 News anchor Lindsay Pena shows us how you can change your old habits in the new year. You have a budget sheet. In her little budgeting book, Tansy Campbell can keep track of pretty much everything. Your goals, your income, your savings, if you're going to save anything, your debt. It's how she's planning for 2020 and part of the larger strategy that's helped her and her family become debt free. She says the best place you can start is by simply writing down what you spend. Once you track your expenses, see what you're spending, I would say do that for a month at least. 
then you could look at your budget and cut back things. The first and easiest place she says to cut back is on subscriptions. Are you still using Hulu? Do you listen to Spotify? Are you still going to the gym? If not, cut it out immediately, like get it off. And most of these are month to month anyway. She says you can also find money when you rethink the variables, things like food and clothes and fun. Basically, it's all about making a plan and sticking to it. And these days, many banks and credit cards can even help you get started, breaking down your spending in easy to understand graphs, charts or lists. Technology is great. It does the categorization for you, so you don't have to go in there and do much of anything. Cal Coast Credit Union President Todd Lane says the start of the year 